Hello, everybody. Welcome to another appointment with Going Expert. Today, we talk to Carlo and we move to Finland. Hey, Carlo. Hi, Rosella. How are you? I'm fine. Here is uh, right now very sunny. This April is uh, going, um, it's getting finally warmer. Yeah. At the end of March was uh, almost, uh, it was the typical back winter. Now it's getting warm. It's really good. Which is nice. Uh, it is warm here too today and sunny. So after this call, we are going to go out uh, enjoying the sun then. <laughs> Great, yeah, this is the perfect weather to, to go. It out. is, it yeah. is indeed. Okay, so Carlo, you live in Finland. Where do you live exactly? Yeah, I live in Murmaki, which is a district of Vanta. I can say it's a border district between Vanta and Helsinki. Okay, and, and for how long have you been in Finland now? Right now, it's 11 years. I moved wow. in July 2013. Okay, well, it's a uh, it's very long time. And um, yeah. as we anticipated today, we talk about how to get the citizenship because you did. But before deep dive on the topic of the day, let us know a little bit more about you. We can follow you on your Instagram account, The Finn Italian. Okay, my name is Carlo. I'm, I moved uh, to, uh, to Finland from uh, Italy and originally from the east of Italy. And I moved uh, just to... I think two years after I finished the university. Okay. Uh, the first, before moving definitely to Finland, I am, I've been uh, to three, uh, three months um, adventure in the Vascula in central Finland in the summer of 2012. And mm -hmm. from this experience, I decided to move uh, definitely to Finland. Okay. I moved in uh, July 2013. The first day I was in Tampere. Mm -hmm. first, because my first idea was to go to study music at the Olive de Pisto. It was a, a renovated school here in Finland. Now it's in Tampere. They move in Tampere. Okay. Yeah. But the, the, um, the Wool program changed as the exam didn't, uh, went, uh, and, uh, didn't went well. As you wished. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they ended up in Toulos, a really small town in the middle of the nature, 25 kilometers from uh, Lina. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I start... Uh, my adventure uh, as a guitar teacher, which is right now my main job. Yeah. But also, also, also my other adventure as a street musician. Even if I have to say that um, this uh, street musician thing is, uh, was not new just before moving to Finland, because I did my mm. first experience in 2009, when I was in Germany, in Cologne, during a three weeks uh, adventure. It was a smart study program. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Sounds like fun. And indeed, we can see your uh, uh, street musician adventure on your Instagram yeah. account okay. again. And I'm going to leave the link uh, in the description. So if people are curious to see uh, what about it, they can just click and uh, and follow you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. I also, talking about uh, my adventure, I want also to add one thing. Also, during this, uh, this three months in Yvascula, has been also for me as me as a, as, as a straight musician, also thanks to a person who has been uh, for me a, a life coach. Okay. His name, his name is uh, Jerry Rosi. He's uh, from Modena, but he's, uh, he's a really a veteran of straight music and he has been touring uh, all around Europe and uh, sometimes in the in summer he goes um, stop uh, by Finland. <laughs> Okay, if well, if he's listening to us, we say hi. <laughs> yeah. Then, okay, okay, cool. And then so many years in Finland, and then at a certain point, you decide to get the citizenship. Yeah. How does yeah, it work? It was... So what's the minimum requirement to, to be able? Yeah, it was, uh, after all these, uh, those years, I came in mind that it was right at the time to apply for the citizenship because so right now I feel, um, I really feel a part of um, this uh, reality. Well, the main requires to, uh, for the citizenship are five years, uh, minimum five years of working in Finland. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also a language test that I made mm -hmm. uh, on November 2021. Okay. It, uh, yeah, the requires, the, the minimum requires is uh, intermediate. 
Uh, intermediate uh, level. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. minimum requirements, five years working there, intermediate level of the local language at least. And yeah. do you have to pay anything to request citizenship? Yeah, yeah, I have to pay both for the test, but also for the application. When I did it, it was 140 euros. Okay. Test. And then Which the was a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, and it was in November 2021. I did also the preparation, it was 70 years ago. It was not obligatory, but I did for, for to be to be sure how was mm -hmm. the test, because it was, the, it was still in the period of the pandemic, and nothing mm -hmm. was so sure. That preparation, I remember, was on Zoom. Also for okay. the test, I remember it uh, took uh, four hours uh, in the morning and other four hours in the afternoon. Wow. But yeah, what, because... what is the test about? I mean, do you have to do like a grammar test or also you have to talk, listen, write stuff? Uh, how does it work? Uh, yeah, it's all uh, structured in, um, in one day. I remember, okay. my, I remember the, the first was the understanding, the mm -hmm. reading understanding, and then also the listening understanding. Listening and understanding, and okay. Then there was the conversation part, and it was with the computer, because, um, you know, we were also in pandemic, so it was not face-to-face. -face. Okay. To be fair, I, don't know, I was a little bit scared, because uh, I, was to, uh, I was a little bit scared that uh, it was not it not enough time or, the, or mm. you know, I didn't talk enough because doing with a computer is a little bit different. And then the last, part, the last part was the written part, which was also hard too. I remember I had something like three texts in one hour, I think. It was something like this. I think wow. it was one hour, one hour and a half, but I remember it was a really short time. I mean, more than one, I mean, three tests. Uh, yeah. about listening, comprehension, uh, uh, talking in another language and knowing that it's a test that is going to give you the citizenship or not is yeah. quite challenging indeed. And so you pay for um, one time this more or less 140 euro and that's it or do you have to pay some other yeah, fees? There is, uh, yeah, there is also the application Okay. And it's 460 euros the, um, if you do on the internet. 360? 460. 460. Wow. Instead, the paper part is 200 more. It's 690 euros. Oh, okay. So if you do in person, like real life in person to a place, it's 200 euro more expensive than if you do it online. 200 more than on the internet because they are probably because of the, all the paperwork that uh, need expensive um, and okay the, yeah and with the internet there are less um, probably less Cost. expensive okay I, remember I did the application on january 2022 mm -hmm. and i got the appointment mm. on the 4th of april of the migri which is the immigration office here in finland okay and i I remember I put all the, all my stuff, all my documents um, out, and uh, when I uh, went here at the um, Migri, mm -hmm. uh, I asked if it was, uh, everything was all right, and she told uh, the woman of the, uh, the Migri, she told me that everything, uh, everything is all right. Okay. <laughs> Such a relief at the moment. Yeah. The only, uh, she told me that the, the process has uh, been very, very too long, but... Uh, because mm. the um, citizenship's uh, application has been uh, increased really a lot. So there was a, mm. a, 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 a backlog. Okay. Also, I think also the situation in Ukraine and in Russia has also rise up this uh, application. There because are many also, people that are coming from there in Finland. Yeah, yeah, no, there are a lot of Russians and um, with... Uh, and with the war, there have been um, a lot of, uh, so not only from Ukraine, but also from Russia, who are, uh, who are going to mm -hmm. escape from the fourth military service. For, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, well, then, of course, uh, people at the Migri are very busy yeah. considering all the situation. Makes sense. And uh, so after that, you could go and request and pick up your uh, new Finnish passport. Yeah, um, um, on May, this May, I have the appointment mm -hmm. with the police uh, for the, uh, okay. the document. Okay. 
Yeah, and yeah. and did you did you had to um, lose the Italian uh, uh, passport or you can have dual citizenship? As I heard, and this is what I heard from my friends um, that they that they live in Finland too. Yeah. And I think and uh, this is what I heard. Uh, there is not there is no need to lose the the the, the Italian one. Yeah, you need to keep it. Uh, because at first I was a little bit scared that I need um, to to lose the Italian citizenship uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. But as to what I heard, there is no um, there is no need to make uh, any, any choice between the two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, it is possible because, um, like for example, in the yeah, surely the police will tell me uh, will tell me more on May when I will when you uh, go. Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Or probably you had to sign something in that case that um, yeah, yeah, makes probably. you lose the the Italian one in the sense. But we'll check and we'll also add the the link to the official website uh, at yeah. the description where all these information are collected anyway and updated because maybe some years ago it was different. Now it's another stuff. Things keep on changing in the sense. So it is important yeah, that people not only listen to real stories like ours, but also have the reference where they can go and check for sure, also based on their own situation. So where they come from and so on and so forward. Okay, so let's say that you take generally, you need generally speaking about six months to have everything done from the application to the um, passport, to having the passport in your hand. Yeah, no, and... because, uh, well, because um, probably because of all the backlogs that happened, because I remember, because I got officially the response from me about the citizenship on February, on the 8th mm -hmm. of February. And uh, when I got to the, uh, to the police site for uh, all the stuff, they... It put me straight to May because mm. probably they want everything. Uh, yeah, everything yeah else. they need to yeah. to move forward maybe with also some priorities, some people that really needed the passport straight away and so on and so forward. So yeah, there are always things that can happen. So let's say the people need to be patient anyway. Yeah. And going back to your experience in uh, in Finland and talking about the language, how difficult it was for you to to learn? Finish. Well, um, in, it's um, it's a matter of uh, habit. There, there are uh, yeah, there are some um, um, difficult sides uh, about the Finnish language. There are some difficult sides, but also some um, easy sides. Okay. Well, first uh, we're talking about the, diffi the difficult sides that uh, probably most of the foreigners uh, have to face. Is uh, surely about this uh, language, which has uh, something like uh, I think it's fourteen declinations. Wow, and, uh, and also it comes from a uh, different uh, roots, uh, which is the Uyghur Finnish uh, roots, uh, which uh, mm -hmm. includes uh, the, the Estonian language and the Hungarian language. Even if Hungarian is um, really different than Finnish and Estonian, mm -hmm. but, but the roots uh, are the same. Okay, uh, if I have to say that Finnish has uh, taken a lot of words uh, from the Swedish because. Uh, Till um, for uh, for a uh, long time, uh, for a lot of years, uh, mm -hmm. Finland was part of Sweden. Mm, okay, yeah. So so the language, of course, mixed up a yeah. little bit. Mm. So how long did it take for you to learn Finnish? I think uh, one uh, one year and a half, maybe also almost two years. Okay, because, well, that is not that long. Yeah, no, because um, it uh, it's about um, it's about the, um, taking the habit. Because mm -hmm. uh, well, I've been to uh, to a lot of uh, courses. I the first course was really in Uvascular in 2012. I learned something, but really something basic, and was at really under the base. Mm -hmm. and, uh, something in Uvascular, but also I learned something in Tampere at the summer university. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, especially in Tulos. That mm. I'm probably, um, because uh, when I came to Toulouse, uh, this uh, small uh, town, uh, it was uh, just like a family. Everybody spoke only Finnish except uh, the pastor who spoke uh, a bit of English. And also, in the same time, I was in Amelina, there was this uh, free courses from the Settlementi, which is mm -hmm. an organization that helps the, the immigrants. 
with uh, free courses and uh, and speaking with the people of the place that um, I really improve a lot. Uh, of course, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, when you know that you don't have English as a backup, then all the knowledge yeah. comes up, and then you learn faster, definitely. Yeah. And do you do you teach guitar to Finnish people yeah. or everybody? Yeah, I mean, uh, most of my students are Finnish, so Finnish, uh, I speak Finnish 24 hours a day. And uh, there are also some other students that teach in English, like for example, one of my students is Estonian. Mm-hmm. And uh, even if uh, Estonian is similar to Finnish, they, they cannot speak Finnish, so I have to speak in English. Okay. So there are students, which is uh, half Italian, okay. uh, mother, is Italian uh, mother is Finnish, and we speak Italian. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. And Carlo, before we um uh, end with this uh, with this yeah. short interview, um, what you want to say about uh, Finland? So, if somebody is doubting now and thinking, oh, I might want to move to Finland, what is your tip? Well, the first thing I want to say if uh, is to be to get prepared for the winter, mm. to get prepared, especially for the the. The worst period is uh, between December, um, in December, which is uh, the day where I the day between December and February, I would say. Mm-hmm. Are the coldest? Okay. And also, and also be prepared about the end of March, the period of the back winter, which is sometimes uh, worse than the winter itself. Okay. But it's a matter of fact because I remember, because I remember uh, well here in Helsinki in uh, the. The frozen winter that we described is, not, is something like history because I remember when I was in Tulos in 2013, there was really in January there was a minus 24 uh, for two weeks. Now it's uh, wow. uh, yeah, here in the southern part, it's just uh, remember well, sometimes there is, but it takes only something like three or four days. Okay, okay. Really yeah. like, uh, but it's very important to mind, like, bear in mind yeah. that it can be very cold, so you need to be prepared. Yeah. And also, I believe the amount of hours of light. And yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very different yeah, it's than, for example, the south. Yeah, yeah. And then there is another thing that I wanted to uh, tell you. If you want to yes. move, uh, if you wanted to move uh, there, you need to be prepared, especially for, uh, to want. I don't know if uh, still exists or uh, this uh, new government have changed the rules, mm-hmm. but uh, you need to be prepared for three uh, for three months because mm. there is this. I don't know if, uh, if in Netherlands there is the same. There is this three months that if you if you uh, don't, uh, if you have uh, found a job, you have to um, go back to where you are. Oh, oh. A maximum time of three months if you have to find a job and then you are reg- uh, registered. Okay, and if you don't find a job in those first three months, you need to leave? Where, uh, there is another thing that I forgot to uh, say. If you have to find a job, but uh, if you are in the universe, uh, if you are uh, in some school, uh, in okay. some like, uh, Problem. like for example in a university stuff if you are uh, here you are safe yeah of course because you are there for studying so the course yeah. is going to be longer than three months probably okay okay yeah. okay oh, i didn't know about it interesting and um, again we'll add uh, to the description some links uh, to the yeah. websites because of course as you say government changes rule changes so it is important to yeah. be to be updated. But yeah, yeah, before really closing off this time, Carlo, what is your rate of Finland from one to 10? <laughs> I, would, I would say eight. I would say Which eight. is a great score. Well, thank you a lot, Carlo, for uh, your time and for uh, guiding us a little bit through your experience and also how to request citizenship. And uh, again, on the description and the vid- of the video, there is the link to the Finn Italian. So the account, the Instagram account of Carlo, if you want to follow his uh, uh, street musician adventures. And uh, we talk soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.